Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my Weapon Power Math video for Update 2.9. Now, for those of you that have been paying attention to the update notes or watched my video yesterday, you will notice that armor and defenses in general got nerfed. And that's to say that they got reduced in terms of their values on items and, and heroes' base armor and base shielding also got reduced. Take for instance Celeste, whose now base armor scales up to 50, and that's a 33% damage reduction from weapon power hits. So what does this mean for weapon power in general? Because if the armor got reduced for everybody and piercing got changed, how does this affect some of the items that we know and love? Well, having a look at tension bow, we're going to look at old tension bow versus new tension bow. We're going to look at the first on hit with the, the passive engaged, so the extra 160 weapon power for that first on hit. And we're going to compare the two passives. Now, the old passive was that 10% flat true damage. The new passive pierces 10% of their armor, so it reduces their armor by 10%. So at 20, 60, 120, and 200 armor, you'll notice that in general, old tension bow outperformed new tension bow. But the early game damage is very similar. So I think what they've really put tension bow in is that early game box. Tension bow realistically is a burst early game item against lower armor carries. Um, so you'll still see it probably built against the likes of Celeste or Scarf if they don't build any armor. But in general, it got a bit of a nerf. So Tension Bow is in, is in a worse place than it was previously. Not completely out of the meta, but definitely in a worse place. Let's have a look at the other piercing item, Bone Saw. So old Bone Saw versus new Bone Saw. Now old Bone Saw, you had a flat 8% true damage. So whatever weapon power you had, 8% of that would go through as true damage. The new Bone Saw has got the 18% pierce of the armor. And armor breaker can't be stacked, so you can't stack um, Bone Saw and Tension Bow. But what um, the, the Bone Saw does do is it reduces the opponent's armor by 18%, and then you still have the passive of the stacks. So you can reduce the armor of the opponent by 40%, and then by a further 18% after that. So at zero stacks, you'll see they are very similar. The on hit damage with a Sorrow Blade. So this is, this is comparing damage of just a Sorrow Blade and a Bone Saw just for consistency between the two. You'll notice that across zero stacks and here looking at four stacks and then eventually as we go into eight stacks the damage is actually quite similar for bone saw across the board um, and that's pretty good that's you can see balanced bone saw to where it was previously and i think bone saw will retain its place as a kind of a very heavy armor piercing item because realistically that's what it's geared for here it's not supposed to be built in your everyday build it's kind of when you're only going up against high armor values but in general, you can see, because we've got similar damage coming out with a higher base HP and the armor being lower, you notice that Pierce probably just isn't as effective now because we're getting worse damage from Pierce in general. It's still effective at dealing with high armor values and high shielding values, but in general, Pierce has been hit pretty hard. But with low base armors and low armors on items, we notice that this is going to be better for crit and breaking point builds. If you've got generally low armor, especially on those backline carries like Celeste who don't like to build armor, you know, you're going to be hitting harder with your critical strikes. You're going to be building breaking point stacks a lot more quickly as well. So everything that we can sort of glean from the update changes is that breaking point and critical strike builds are better than they were before. Now, they were already good. They were already the go-to. You didn't have a huge amount of variation between critical strike builds and breaking points. Some people did like to add in tension bows and bone saws, but in general now, straight up critical strike builds and straight up breaking point builds are likely just going to be better in the current meta, unless you've literally got an enemy team stacking inordinate amounts of armor. Now let's have a look at three different builds here. Sorrow Blade, Poison Shift, Tyrant's Monocle, Sorrow Blade, Tornado Trigger, Tyrant's Monocle, and Sorrow Blade, Bone Sword, Tyrant's Monocle. I'm trying to com keep the builds fairly consistent for the sake of um, literally comparing Bone Sword against other items. And you're going to see here, I'm giving you the values in DPS. Now, DPS is damage per second, and this is worked out by taking the average damage of on hit, which I can post the calculations if you like, but it's very boring, and then you basically how much damage that would do over one second. So if you've got 1.4 seconds, it will be doing slightly greater damage than its average on hit damage because you're doing more than one attack per second. And you'll see here the DPS is compared across all three builds. Now, you would never really build Sorrow Blade, Poison, Shift, Tyrant's Monocle, but I'm just adding it in for the sake of... Um, basically having another build to compare against because I didn't want to work out breaking point because when you have add in a breaking point to calculations it gets incredibly complex and it would require a video in its own right which I think I'll do later down the line. So let's compare these three builds and you'll see the DPS against the different armor values on the left. You'll notice and I think what's really important to point out is that 
even at eight stacks of bone saw on this build against the critical strike build with the tornado trigger and talents monocle the dps isn't that different and that's a massive investment with the bone saw build to get to eight stacks to even compare against the critical strike dps so in general you're seeing here that the trend is working towards critical strike being better now if critical strike is this good compared to bone saw think about what breaking point functions like in a longer fight so if you're building up eight stacks of bone saw the likelihood is that you're going to be getting like a skyrocketing amount of breaking point stacks as well so from this information here we can make a pretty good assertion that in general critical strike is good and in general breaking point is good right now that they were already good before but they've just got better and even against higher armor values and 190 armor by the way is the max base armor of celeste plus metal jacket so that's Cel that's a celeste with a metal jacket she'd have to build a metal jacket to even get that kind of defensive priority against your critical strike build so what i can really say from the calculations that i've done is bone storm might be better as a later game item against high armor but given those sort of calculations that we've just seen there double weapon power might not even need armor shred now just because again defenses are harder to come by so it opens up the field to be a little bit more flexible with the kind of picks that you you bring out obviously again it's nice to mix up your damage and it's usually better to have one crystal power and one weapon power carry on your team but because again like i said defenses in general are harder to come by it's a little bit uh, more flexible now how you build but from what we can see the overall lower armor is that i've said again i'm going to reiterate it now critical strike and breaking point builds are very strong right now you get a less reduction to your critical strike damage and it's easier for you to stack breaking point so if you take away anything from this it's that critical strike builds and breaking point builds are good and finally jewel she gets free armor from her rote perk. She's got free pierce on her Thunderstrike, and she loves critical strike builds. So I would very, very much uh, anticipate your solo queue games being full of Jewel in the upcoming weeks on this update. I think Jewel's probably going to be in a very strong place. She's going to hit harder, and the pierce is also coming for free in her kit. So she doesn't even need to bother with things like Tension Bow or Bone Saw. She can just go straight critical, critical strike, and she's just going to straight up hit harder as well. So there we go. And I'll be doing one on CP towards the end of this week. See you soon.